The Schaefer's plan to continue Midwest wheel covers as an online venture, but will close up the shop, meaning all used tires must go. New Ulm is literally built around history. On North Minnesota Street is the Kiesling House, built in 1861, the only remaining wooden structure from that era. The collection facility will be open Tuesday, noon to 4. Once you have made an appointment, you can come by the side entrance to drop off your household hazardous materials. In Mankato, Alex Tejada, KEYC News 12. When approaching a new dog, it's important to remember dog petting etiquette. First, ask the owner, is your dog friendly? Yes, he is. And second, may I pet your dog? Yes, you may. Thank you for asking. From 8 miles an hour to over 150 miles an hour, racers brought all sorts of rides to the Swan Lake Radar Run. We have ATVs and snowmobiles and mini bikes that come down our track. And even a boat. With mild winter weather this year, the event almost did not happen. We've been uh, pretty fortunate um, this year um, with this little cold spell that we were able to have it. Um, there's been a couple of years where we haven't been able to because uh, it's been so warm that we haven't had good ice. Um, this year here we got uh, 11, 12 inches, really good solid ice for people to come out and enjoy. And so how did the ice treat the competitors' snowmobiles? Yeah. And the wet one over there is mine. Racing categories were broken down based on engine size and type of snowmobile. However, for owners, it has not been the best year to ride. From what I understand this year, the tracks haven't been so plentiful because we've had such warm weather. The proceeds of the event go towards grooming the over 140 miles of track the club operates. With people coming from out of state to test out the 1,000-foot track, what do the younger participants enjoy the most? I'm racing. Me too. I won 56. No matter how fast you go or what you ride, the Snowmobile Club welcomes newcomers. Um, we have our meetings every third Tuesday at Swanee's Pub in Cortland. Uh, it's uh, open to anybody. We'd love it if anybody could come up and join us and have a beverage and uh, we talk about our trails. Yeah. We might. In Cortland, Alex Tejada, KEYC News 12. Mason Boltje is a junior development coach at the Inner City Tennis Foundation. Um, we focus on uh, exercise, positive eating habits, and stuff like that. Just really try to improve the life of these kids on and off the court. After graduating last year, Boltje has been teaching tennis during physical education class at elementary schools in North Minneapolis. The all-conference college player wanted to provide the students with more than just a lesson on how to play the game. And when I was in the schools, I noticed a lot of these kids really, really want to play more tennis, um, but it's not always really accessible for them. And so I kind of started thinking, how, how can I provide more opportunities for them? And the Gustavus connection and inner city tennis connection just clicked. And then I, I just pursued the idea. And here we are today, and I think we're going to have a great event. Working with Inner City Tennis's main partner school, Prodeo Academy, he set up a day for some students to play with the Gustavus tennis teams. I really wanted to reward the kids who had good behavior and who had earned the right to, to play some more tennis. And so I wrote down some names of kids who stood out in class. Inner City Tennis Foundation uses fundraising for outreach programs to make events like this possible. While it might just be one day, to the kids, it meant much more. They, they started asking me when we were going on this field trip, the day after I gave them the permission slip, which was six weeks ago. I mean, I've been getting the question every day, when are we going, when are we going? They're you know, asking tons of questions. The kids, all 37 of them, have just been so excited for this experience. After a couple of hours of tennis, the kids and players ate dinner together. So what does Bolt G get out of this? I mean, I love doing it, more, more than like doing it. I love it. Um, just because you can see how much it means to them. Using a game he excelled at, Boltji shared a positive experience with the children. Um, sports are super great because they bring us together like that. And so, again, tennis is a, is a great vehicle for creating positive life change. He hopes to continue to be a role model to kids through the sport. In St. Peter, Alex Tejada, KEYC News 12.
With over 150 breweries across the state, Minnesota has become a hotbed for craft beer enthusiasts. With Mankato Brewery celebrating its seventh anniversary this month, has the beer craze taken off in the area? Oh, absolutely. It's been crazy, and it's not just right here in Mankato. I mean, look at the surrounding areas, you know. You've got Lost Sanity down in Medelia. Montgomery Brewery is only, what, 20, 30 minutes away. And then, of course, you got Shells over in New Ulm. I mean, the local community down here, they love their craft beer, and it shows. The event has sold out since the second expo and the same this year. David Jansen and his friends came out for a third time. We've been having a great, great time. time. Great time. We enjoy making new friends and wearing fun outfits. Locale Brewery, which opened in the fall, used the event to let some people try some of their new brews. Uh, we've got two new beers, uh, just sort of craft beer expo specials. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been fun. People have really enjoyed it. So. With Mankato's brewery scene on the rise, what styles are the most popular? The older style beers, you know, your classic styles are kind of going away, and, and things like sour beers are really popular. Um, hazy IPAs are kind of the, the rave this last year. The uh, sours from Shells are amazing. The event allowed people to try beers from over 45 breweries from across the country. While beer is in the name and the center of the event, Opdahl says it's more than just about fermented beverages. But that's not what it's all about. It's really about spending a day with your friends and family and the people you care most about, just having fun, trying a bunch of new beers, maybe beers you've had before, beers you haven't had before. Um, it's just a great chance to, to have a good time. And that's what it comes down to. It's a good time first. Libations and conversations were enjoyed at another successful showcase of Minnesota's best breweries. In Mankato, Alex Tejada, KEYC News 12. As much preparation went into the Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic at Spring Lake Park, some things remain unplanned for. The tournament's been going great. We weren't expecting any uh, snow today, but we're dealing with it. Players of all skills were present and split into five different brackets. Yeah, we have uh, different divisions for different age groups. Um, each groups are, are competitive and, and they have fun, so that's what it's about. Some teams came into the tournament with experience. We've been playing together for probably five years, actually, playing a couple different tournaments. And While his team haven't enjoyed good results, it hasn't dampened Doby's spirits. We've lost both games, but it's, it's a good time. There's a lot of good teams here, but it's fun. Team Ramrod prepares a change of tactics going into a knockout game. Yeah, we're going to try scoring some goals from now on, see how that goes. If not, we'll resort back to our old, our old ways. Volunteers helped out with rink maintenance, officiating games, and more. Everybody always enjoys it, whether you're working or playing or just coming to hang out and watch. It's, it's always a good time every year. As for the steady snowfall, just part of it. This is as Minnesota as it gets. We're on a frozen pond playing hockey, and it's for a good cause. So. The Anthony Ford Pond Hockey Classic concludes Sunday with the youth teams in action. After the crowning of five adult champions today, six youth teams will achieve victory tomorrow. In North Mankato, Alex Tejada, KEYC News 12.